Hello, and welcome to the Net Girls. <laughs> so it's going to be an outtake where I'm like, you've never looked sexier. Oh, thank you. Um, <laughs> this is episode 537. My name is Laura, also known as Lala. There we go. I got it towards the end. You did. Um, I'm Leslie, also known as You Don't Call Me a Less. Today is Friday, the 2nd of July, 2021. Um, yeah, that's all I got. Thank you for those of you who gave us feedback about the sound. I know the video was flipped backwards last week. I usually remember to fix that in post, and I just forgot last week. So, um, We'll get there. Yeah, I mean, we probably won't, but... <laughs> we'll try to entertain you on the way. Um, so, if you're looking for perfection, this is, I think you probably know already. This, this is, is not the podcast for There you. are many beautifully produced, craft related podcasts out there that put a lot of time and effort into each episode. And I can tell you, Laura and I enjoy this, but we enjoy this because we take the time to record it and then I spend as little as possible. To editing it <laughs> less than an hour and then it usually takes somewhere between half an hour and 45 minutes to get it uploaded and posted everywhere and literally, literally <laughs> aside from writing up show notes which we do before we record that is all the time we spend on the episode we don't brainstorm ideas we don't do flashy. we do <laughs> but we don't like we brainstorm ideas for events like Stash Dash. Well, yeah, stuff. but it's more just like hanging out with your friend. And you're like, wouldn't that be cool if... <laughs> if we moved to Discord right. this year? Yeah. If we forced older people to learn a new platform. <laughs> and I'm including myself in that older people statement. To make things more inclusive for all? Yeah. Um, Change is hard, y'all. It is hard. It is, that is like the story of my life right now. I have a new boss and he is wonderful so far, but just change is hard in general. It, it stresses Laura out. It does. I had a dream last night that I took a bunch of kids on a field trip to Wendy's, but I don't know why. But it wasn't like a real, it was like a all you could eat buffet Wendy's and it was weird and there was nothing without meat and it was just traumatic. I'm picturing your kids going into an all you can eat Wendy's and their heads just exploding. <laughs> That's every kid, every teenager. <laughs> oh yeah, not yours specifically, just every teenager. Any kid that age, yeah. I don't know. Um, I don't know. <laughs> Wendy's is a fast food chain for people who uh, are not in the States. Yeah. Um, so knitting, would you like to go? Um, I can give me one second to finish nope. this. I'll, I'm not even finishing the round. I'm finishing this side of the round because I'm magic looby. I'm still working on my harvest cardigan. I am on the second sleeve now. Um, I was trying to get it done before we recorded, but it did not happen. Leslie was like, we can record now. And I was like, oh, I thought I'd have three more <laughs> hours. Uh, yeah, my boss told me to leave early today. So It is almost um, a holiday weekend. Yeah in the states so this is what it looks like it's the harvest cardigan by tin can knits i'm using some camillo fiber company um her worsted weight salt pepper pepper base i think something like that um which is really cool because one of the strands changes to a black every once in a while and then the other one remains gray and so you get this very dappled effect and that's done through the ply structure which is pretty cool um so i am decreasing the second sleeve when i decrease for my sleeves so that i can get them to match because i am not a knit two at a time type girl i um put pins every time i do a decrease which on this is every four rounds if i was to knit this again i would start decreasing sooner up because it has you knit a certain number of inches and then start decreasing I just started off the get-go because it is you can just tell it is a little bit bigger but that's than, okay because I imagine you're gonna be wearing it over yeah like, it's gonna be it's layered. Gonna layer yeah. yeah but it does um it does like flare at the wrist a little bit see that gap and I would have liked that gap to a little be more snug. a little bit more snug but um it's fine. I actually did change the rate of decreases. I was supposed to decrease every five rows, 
and I decreased every four instead. So, um, which is the next size up. So I did decrease it a little bit of a faster rate, but not fast enough. So I have these pins in to mark my decreases, and then I am doing the same on the second sleeve, so I know that I have a certain number, which I'm going to count in a second, um, and then I just repeat that on the second sleeve so that they match. I did get a little bit of pooling up towards the top, but I like it. I could have changed it so I was alternating skeins and I wouldn't have gotten that, but I think it's kind of cool. And it's fine. And I don't have to leave an extra ends because I'm not alternating skeins. So yeah, almost done. Let's work those two extra ends. Yeah. To not have to leave. <laughs> I mean, it really is. Um, I was thinking about doing patch pockets on it, but I don't think I'm going to. Um, what changed your mind? The thought of having to get two pockets, even on both sides. I just want to be done with it. Oh, well, that's fair, too. You can always have pockets later. Yeah, I can. Um, I also don't know with knit pockets, there's a lot of stretch. There is. And what I am wanting to put in them, in, put in them is either going to be keys, which could damage the knit material, or um, a big heavy fit. So. Yeah, I mean, you could make the pocket out of of a sewn, like a woven fabric, but you still got the problem of attaching it to the knitting, even if you hand sew it. Yeah. It's still, it's going to weaken that. Yeah, it's going to pull, yarn. it's going to constantly pull down. And because this is a top-down raglan, it doesn't have a seam line right here. Like it would if it was a sewn garment or a garment that was pieced and then sewn together. Um, so this seam doesn't exist. So there's no real backbone there to keep it from really stretching and drooping. Yeah. So I think with this one, um, and that's a, I have a bunch of store-bought knit cardigans yeah. that I put my phone in that have pockets. And that's an issue that happens is they droop mm -hmm. on one side. Or um, they become so swingy, like the weight of the phone actually swings it out from my body it's a when I turn and it's like, boom, you know, and I'm always afraid I'm going to crack my phone. So, I mean, that's just a normal everyday fear uh, for me. How many times have <laughs> I dropped mine today? <laughs> um, well, I was doing an Instagram live. I just told Leslie this and it fell out of the tripod and went like flying and hit Pearl and it was a big to do. Um, but I did do an Instagram live earlier today that's saved on my Instagram, which is Lala Nuts talking about woolen spinning. But yeah, because I'm doing, you'll see in a second, I've been doing a lot of woolen uh, prep and woolen draft spinning this week. But yeah, so that is my main thing that I've been working on. So before you move, I have a question. Yeah. Your sleeve that you're working on, I see you're knitting it in the round with a magic loop. Yeah. Um, what about the, I, I thought you typically use those little chow goods. The 12 inch circulars? Yeah. I don't have them in a size 7. I thought those went up to an 8. The little, because they I started think mine two. only go to 6. I don't know. Okay. I just wondered, because I thought they went up to 8. Well, I already had, so, um, I'd already done the body yeah. on this, and I don't like switching needle brands, especially because different brands have different sizes. These are signatures, and I don't mind magic looping on a sleeve. Um, it does go a little bit faster if I have. I actually probably could have, because this is so large, I probably could have used a oh, 16 like a inch. Mm. Yeah. Well, the 12 inch is kind of a baby hat size, but this is like a 16 inch. little ear pig thing. Yeah, that's like 19 inches around. So I could have used a 16 inch. But this is fine. I like using the same brand because not every brand, even though they all might be 4.5 millimeters, they're not all the same. Um, and I had these already out and ready to go. And my studio is kind of a nightmare right now. It really needs to be. Worse than mine. <laughs> it is because you can walk in yours. <laughs> um, but it really needs a good organization. And I have needles everywhere because I've just been throwing them in a bag versus putting them away. 
Yes, you do. Not that I've finished anything at all this month, because I really haven't. I mean, you've done a lot of spinning. You may not have finished any knitting, but... And this is a decent size. I mean, this sweater's 1,600 yards, so it's a decent size sweater anyways. Um, but yeah, and then I've been knitting. I knit a couple rounds on the sock this week, and this is from Knit Spin Farm. And I'm knitting this on size one. This is her Targi Sport Base in um, plant a, World Plant a Garden, a Vegetable Garden Day. So yeah, just those two things going around and around and around. That is about it. Oh, someone last week, back to the sweater, asked about increases on the side. Um, so if I want a more A-line shaped sweater at the underarm part, I mark my underarm part uh, when I divide for the sleeves. Um, so it's the middle of the underarm. I just increase, like you would do any decreases or increases for waist shaping. I just, um, instead of doing any decreases, I just increase. Oh, we're talking about the person who asked about the full belly adjustment? Yeah. So um, that gives you more coverage because I am more of an A-line shape person right now in my life. So um, my hips are actually wider than my chest. So I increase out. Mine have basically always been wider than my chest. <laughs> but it happens. You know. Welcome to 40, friend. Everyone is unique. Oh, yeah. I dislike the term, the saying that everyone is beautiful because I do not like the idea that beauty is owed or Ooh. necessary. So um, I try to work that out of my vernacular. Interesting. Or have to sneeze coming I have to think about that a little bit. Um, but I, you always see, like, strong is the new beautiful or whatever. And it's like... Why do we need to be beautiful? Because the be marketing strong. companies tell us to be beautiful. Did you see Pinterest is getting rid of diet ads? That was a big thing mm, today. That's good. Yeah, absolutely. I did not see that, but that's good. Um, okay, so knitting. I've got two things that I'm working on. Um, one you've seen. Well, actually, I think you've seen them both. Yes, you have. So the first is this Neonin sweater by Clemson Company. Um, it is knit out of Sparrow, which is their linen yarn, um, and I'm knitting it with this soft blue color. It's really pretty. I've made probably about three and a half inches of progress since last week. It's a very soft, like just wave, kind of all the way up. Um, I'm not even measuring because I have to get to like 15 inches or something and that's so far from now that I'll measure. If, once I feel like I'm at 12 inches, then I'll start measuring. Until then, I just don't care. Um, but I'm also not trying to put a deadline or anything on myself because then I'll just stop being interested in it. Yeah, I think that's good. Um, no deadlines are good. So that's number one. And number two that I'm working on is... Um, also Knit Spin Farm, this is the National Parks colorway. Um, it's the same base that Laura mentioned, it's the Sport Wave Targi um, nylon mix. And I have made some progress. I think I was about halfway through the cuff last week, and so I finished the cuff and started on the heel flap. Um, when I do my Sport Wave socks, I tend to do a top down heel flap and gusset. And I'm knitting mine on size threes. And, uh, yeah, that's about it. Um, the only other thing that I'm actively working on right now is some sashiko. I think um, it's interesting that both of us are working on sweaters and socks, and that's it. Yeah, well, mine's a, more of a top than a sweater, but yeah. Yeah. A garment and socks. That's unusual for it both is. of us to be knitting the same type of objects at the same time. Just wait, because Laura will bring out her yarn like museum <laughs> but you have sewing too yeah i mean yeah we it's good that we do different things this would I be agree. boring if we always did the same exact things um so i'm working on some sash sashiko which is a japanese embroidery technique um i linked to the shop that i bought this stuff from in our show notes our show notes are on our website and that is the knit girls with three l's dot com all the stuff that we talk about is in our show notes. We try to put it in our show notes. 
So this is some sashiko. It's kind of hard to see because it's the soft variegated color. And this it's one is very blues simple. Blues and greens. It's like seagrass. Yeah, it's just it's just wavy lines. There's nothing really complicated about this one, and that's fine because I got some other really not complicated but Complex. intricate. Yeah. So this it comes in the it, this is cotton. Um, I don't remember the weight, but it's sashiko thread. Um, although that does come in different weights. But Mom has a cold store near her that sells different ones. Yeah go by there to go and see her um so this is the uh, yarn i got it from a shop in japan um i think i i bought enough to get free shipping <laughs> which i think was like 75 dollars worth so i got i think four different cool little kits and some different colors did you thread. decide what you were doing with them yet there are some that are big panels. I say big panels, like 20 by 30 Okay. Um, panels. Um, so those will definitely go on the wall, but I'm thinking I might combine the rest of stuff. That, like, I may, you know, collect them until I have enough to do a quilt pop or something. That'd be cool. Um, we'll see. And then do, like, big stitch quilting on it as well. Yeah. So, I don't know yet. But for now, I'm just going to, I enjoy just stitching them, so I'll just keep doing that. It's a good plan too. Um, yeah, I think that's it. I have some FOs. Do you have any FOs? I have zero FOs, FOs, like the rest of this month has been. I think I knit one baby hat this month. Oh, look at those. So I like those. These I knit for Kobe um, earlier this year. And then he wore a hole. Oh my God, there's another one. Um, How is he wearing holes up there? It's an odd place. That it must, must be where it's snagged or something. Yeah, it might be where the top of his shoe hits. Because that's a pretty clean cut and it's just a single thread. So I'll have to fix that. Uh, let me put. Why are you see. stealing the stitch markers that I stole from you? So um, he wore these for, I don't know, a week straight with his sweaty boy feet and walked holes into them. So I darned them today. Um, what the other one I'll show you both of them and I just used the woven the old fashioned woven hatch method um, with a garning mushroom uh, this one was about we should try that loom that we got from Katrinkles I, I've used that before okay. um, and it's useful but I, it's also if you just have a darning mushroom or something that's fine too gotcha um this one was about three quarters of an inch. The hole was about three quarters wow. of an inch. Wow. Um, but the uh, this one was over an inch, um, and it was oblong. And as I was patching this, I was like, I probably should have just thrown this away, <laughs> <laughs> um, because it was a weird shape, and so it wasn't very easy to patch. So when he wears through these again, as he inevitably will, they'll just get thrown away. What yarn was this? This Do was the um, yarn that we got in Scotland. Oh, um, that's right. With the great label. I forget what it's something with an M. Marika. But it wasn't a merino nylon, right? It was just, it just was wool. Not yeah. Wool. I didn't say, but I figured it would wear better than um, this. This was a merino nylon. So I figured this would be a little hardier. Gotcha. I didn't, I was asking what the sock was. Oh, this. Wore through. Yeah, this is. Um, CJ Knit, I don't know if she's in business anymore, I'll have to look it up, but it was CJ Knit uh, something, I'll have to look it up in my Etsy history. Um, but yeah, so I patched some socks, uh, so we get those back from him, and I finished my Aeronite pants, which involved doing the cuffs, everything else was done. Cool. So I made them, the cuffs into these little woven, it's kind of like the bottom of a sweatpant, it's a little bit stretchy um so they're kind of harem-y which i don't know how i feel about yet but you know i made the there were three different cup options this was the one that i chose uh so i haven't worn them yet i need to wash them they uh, match the top that you're wearing today very well me too um this is out of shibui their linen i forget what read twig i think it's read okay um well, reader twig. I don't know. Whatever the linen base is. I don't know. And this is the rust color. 
and I forget what this top is. I'll have to go back and look. But it's just a simple V. Um, oh, it's it's a Quince and Company pattern that I knit a couple years ago. But I can't remember the name. But it's not squarish. That's the only no, it's not remember. squarish. Um, I'll put it in the show notes because somebody will want to know. So yeah, again, these are the ones that I made. Um, I already showed, but the cute little pocket detail with the box pleat and the uh, stitch pattern from my sewing machine. Uh, these are the Aeronite pants. I don't know if I said that. Yeah. I so liberated. Cool. Um, and they do good. They're, um, not all of their patterns go up in size to the highest higher size ranges, which I think their higher size range ends in a 30 or a 32. Maybe a 34. I can't remember. Are they the ones that have been redoing some of their mm -hmm. older patterns? Yeah. Good for them. So this is one of the ones that was re-released with new sizing. Um, but they're the same company that did the metamorphic dress, the one that I have that, that you can flip inside out. It's really too heavy. I should have made it in lighter fabrics. Um, you can like always make it again. Pad uh, pockets. Um, they also designed the forager vest. Mm. And oh, they have a long coat that I like too. Um, the like duster. Yes. Mm -hmm. Which I have that pattern because I bought some fabric in Scotland to make it and then realized that I'm really too short for that um, and I wouldn't wear it so I know but it's a green and I don't think you would really I wear green what you have to pick out some fabric yes um so yeah that's most of my crafting for actually I think that's all of my crafting for the week cool I have some spinning some spinning no some spinning oh, I was spinning it's great. I'm, it's I'm thrilled. I can't wait to spinning. see it and see what I can like mooch off of you. <laughs> I don't think anything this week. I like all this stuff. Uh, is mooch a, a derogatory term? I have to look that up. I don't know. Um, I'm gonna look that up while you start. That you can steal off of me. Yeah. Let's use that synonym instead. Um, so I, the uh, uh, the <laughs> I started spinning for Tour de France, and um, so as I watched the Tour de France by Greg race, which is one of my favorite things to do, I also spin. Um, and then I've been doing a little bit additional spinning because my brain has decided that we must spin all the things. Because it's like, this is a competition. You have to do your best. And I'm like, no brain, it's okay. But my okay. brain is it doesn't not. doesn't look like it's okay. Good. intrinsically awful. Yeah. Good. Um, so this was actually a spun pre-pool pre-tour, but I didn't have it plied um, by last podcast. So I plied it the next day, last Friday, so we could go. And this is a, two bats from Knit Spin Farm, 47% Falkland, 28% Gotland, which is a longer wool, 25% Merino, Silk Noil, and Silk. It is called Unexpected Amaryllis. Mm -hmm. And it is 400 yards of a woolen spun. The main difference between woolen spinning and worsted spinning. With woolen spinning, you let the twist enter your draft zone. With worsted, you do not. And I spun this on the matchless, and it's a two fly. So it's like this scummy green and a darker green and pink and pops up blue every once in a while. So that's enough to do a decent sized cowl for sure. Another six ounces Ooh. that I spun. This I bought from her shop. This came out really pretty. Yeah, I did not realize there was orange in it, like in there's the back. So much, but that, because there's not yeah. a lot. Yeah, so I like it a lot. It's got like a grayish base. This is Winter Parade. This was a shop update that I must have hit, and I got two of them. I try. I'm trying now to buy two of things because more yardage is always better, right? Um, and it's not coming out super great on the camera, but it is Blue Face Luster, Cordale, Falkland, Merino, Sorry Silk, Shetland, Silk Noil, and Tarky. So six ounces of that. There was a lot of silk in this one, um, especially Silk Noil. And which you can see, that's kind of these little like chunky bits mm -hmm. of the white. Um, so this is 415 yards of woolen spun on the matchless six ounces. So yeah, I'm really enjoying my matchless, my cherry matchless being set up in double drive. I'm getting a lot of spinning done on that. 
Another Knit Spin Farm Bat. I really like this one too. This must have been an update, and I wish I had gotten two of these. But this is just 3.25 ounces. Um, of it, the base was the bat was called Mythical. It is a blue face luster, Falkland, Polworth, Surrey Silk, and Shetland. And it's 215 yards woolen on the match list. This will be a great hat for sure. Woolen spun is a little bit less strong mm -hmm. than worsted spun. So you want something that's not going to get a ton of wear. So it's perfect for sweaters, bat, or um, cowls, hats. It's not as strong, but it, it holds temperature better, right? Um, like it, it is warmer. Yeah. yeah, because all that air keeps the warmth in. And then this is... It's so funny. Um, I have been kind of hoarding Southern Cross Fiber for a while. I haven't been spinning it lately because I'm not in his club anymore, although I'm looking maybe next year getting back into his club. Maybe if I spin down some stuff, um, which I've been doing a decent job You've of this summer. Been spinning your balls off. Um, if I had any. Yeah. So well, this you was... don't anymore because... <laughs> I've been, I've actually been spinning um, my fingerprints off, that which I I've believe. done before, uh, which is, I have to clock in with fingerprints at work, and I've actually spun them down before during Spinzilla, where I couldn't clock in at work. Oh, God, Spinzilla. Um, that's what, I'm trying to not treat TDF like Spinzilla this year. Like, it's not healthy, I need to take breaks, I've been getting up and doing stuff, I've been knitting. I've been alternating between plying and spinning it's for really the last couple days. Braid, right? Yeah, it's uh, International Wool of Mystery, which is the best name for a mystery wool. It feels like it's a very soft, so it's a short staple fiber that's soft, but it also kind of feels like it's either a super wash because of the vibrancy of the colors. Um, so I don't know what it is. But it was a uh, 20, uh, 2015 Tour de Fleece colorway, um, 3.9 ounces, 375 yards. I spun it on the Sparrow by Daedalus. It was a fractal spin, which means I divided the second half up into smaller chunks. So that's why you get a lot of that barber pulling. Um, yeah, so it'll be great. I don't know. It'll be great mitts, probably. I think it'll be really good mitts, like bright mittens, especially. I could see out of this, or I could do like sport weight socks, but it's a tube fly, so I'm thinking mitts. We'll see. Um, yeah, so I'm really happy with that, okay, and it's well, mysteriousness. Um, and it plumped up a lot when it was washed, so yeah, I like, um. I like all the clubs that I'm in, but I really liked David's because I really like his color sense, but also he does a lot of like bond. He's from Australia yeah, and he does a lot of native mm -hmm. fibers to Australia, which is really nice. Um, it's different than what we get in the U S a lot. It's more than just Merino, which is all the clubs that I'm in do more than just Merino. Cause there's so many, cooler fibers There's out a lot there of than great, just great fibers to mess with yeah than just merino so that is the little over a pound that i got plied this week um i'm trying to not wait till i run out of bobbins to start plying and ply more frequently because it also gives me a break from spinning yeah Singles. once your fingerprints recover yeah it's different it's a different motion so, for sure. So that are, those are the yarns that I've finished, for sure, um, a I, good bit. I've already hit 15,000 meters for Stash Dash I remember you saying last that. week, so this is all gravy on top. Um, I didn't spend anything this week, but I did spend somewhere around 10 hours total um, prepping a fleece to be washed so like taking the locks out making sure everything's lined up and that if there's any dirt you sort of break the tips apart a little bit and then putting them in lingerie bags to be washed i haven't washed any of them yet but um I, that took a surprisingly long amount of time that's it was the only place in my house that hasn't been washed 
So I wanted to go ahead and get that done. Good for you. Um, I mean, there's still, it's still not washed, but it's... I spent probably 10 hours calling different yarn shops trying to get combs. Laura is still desperately <laughs> in search of Valkyrie extra fine wool combs. And someone did an ISO on um, Ravelry and hasn't gotten any responses. So I'm like, I'm not the only one. Yeah. It's fine. Uh, I thought I was going to look out at um, the spinnery near my parents' house in um, near Dollywood. Mm -hmm. There's a store there called the Spinnery, and they had single row, but not yeah. double row. And not Valkyrie. They had um, a different brand, but it was close. Like, if they had been double row, I would have taken them. But, and you, yeah. You're going to your mom's this month. Can you borrow hers while you're there? Yeah, I'm going to take some fiber with me and steal hers. Or you can at least there. make sure that that's what you want. Yeah, yeah. she only has, she doesn't have the extra fine. She has the fine. That's better than anything but you've got right now. Yeah, right? absolutely. So. Because uh, we finally found my combs. <laughs> we did. They were <laughs> at my house. But in my defense, I had emptied all the SSK, like. Equipment. Equipment. And someone had stuck them in the middle of. Um, a fiber bin. Yeah. We take fiber so people can make bats and stuff at SSK. And they were stuck in the middle of that yeah. bin. I was just glad she found them because I like I literally looked everywhere in this room twice to try to find them, and I'm like, I, you know, I misplace things sometimes, but I was pretty darn sure I knew where those were. Yeah, because they ha they always live right over there. Yeah, yeah, you can take them back too. I'll give them to them you next time you visit my house. But, um, you also left your knit spin farm bat at my house. Oh, okay. Sorry. So, no, it's fine. I, I almost spun it because <laughs> I thought I had gotten it out to spin, and I was like, wait, this is this month's club. Mine's over there. Yeah. Because when I was at Laura's house for knit night this week, I was braiding. You were. Um, That's a, something that you uh, were doing that you have not talked about, and you did a lot of work on it, too. So, This is one of those projects that I'm always, it's always sort of in the back of my head that I want to do. Um, and it's an attempt to um, reduce, like, the amount of waste that comes out of our household. Um, so I have bags of, like, clothes that no longer fit, um, or maybe they're stained and non-recoverable. And I have a couple bags of t-shirts that I want to make into t-shirt quilts but then like the back of the shirt won't get used for anything. So um, a while back I cut a lot of the, not a lot, but like a bag's worth of those items into strips using the rotary cutter. There's all sorts of tutorials online of how to like cut um, clothing into strips. So I've got all these like little balls of fabric yarn essentially and I want, wanted to make like the old fashioned um, wool braided rugs, but I want them to be washable because I live in a house with a lot of pets and two men, so things get dirty. Yeah. Um, so I want it to be washable and those old big wool rugs are like dry cleanable, but you can't just throw them in the washer. Yeah. And apparently beating them is bad for the fibers. Like taking them out and whacking them with a thing is bad for the fibers. I've spent too much time looking at this online. So <laughs> that's your research hole. Mine was comes this yeah. week. <laughs> um so I had a bunch of these that I tried making into like um shag rugs. That was super labor intensive and I was just over it. So I decided instead that I was going to braid them. Um and then you can take like the strips up there of the braids and then you know use your sewing machine or you can hand sew um, them into you know a shape whether that be like a big oval or I kind of want to do squares so that they'll link together but squares is n it, it's not a it, this doesn't lend itself to squares very well uh. unless you sew like straight across so you have several strips and then you cut, you know, the edges so you're left with a square. But then you have to sew the edges down. So I haven't decided yet how exactly I'm going to do that. I like ovals, and you can put them in front of doorways easily, or over like, um, like the threshold from one room to another. Yeah, 
I want a big one for my living room. Um, so, I don't know, I'm still sort of yeah. playing around with ideas. Um, and it might be that I make ovals and then I make the little diamonds that can go between them to sort of join them into a bigger hole. Because I really want them to be either small enough to fit in the washing machine or they can be broken down to fit in the washing yeah, machine. Yeah, how would you... I would get strips and then put snaps on them gotcha. and then run them through. Um, or you could do Velcro. Yeah, or you could just essentially tie like ribbon together. Oh, yeah. You know, it doesn't have to be complicated. But this looks like this because I tried to sew it on the sewing machine to, just to sort of see how it acted. Yeah. And it didn't, like I put the wrong amount of tension on it so it started folding up like, um, a, like a bowl. Yeah. So I was just pulling out the stitches before Laura got here. But yeah, so I've got a huge ball of <laughs> fiber or yarn. Fabric. Fabric yarn, yeah. Fabric braids. And um, I've got about the same in ripped up sheets, also braided into a ball. Um, I don't know why I did both, but now I have both, so. Yeah, you have different you don't just have one room in your house. Yeah. You have multiple rooms. So I'll probably... I could see those being super absorbent, the sheets, for like in front of like your back door and then you could just throw it in the washer. Or the bathroom, like in front of the shower yeah. before you get out. So I just, I like the idea of trying to reduce the amount of waste that, yeah. that I put out. So yeah. So that's another craft, I guess, that I've been doing. Also, I'm trying... Um, Amy Beth put out um, a note to her patrons about doing a journal along for the month of July. Ooh, interesting. So you don't have to share your journal or anything like that, but just where you, and it can be any kind. You can do bullet journaling, art journaling, junk journaling. You You're do, picking back up your journal. Yeah, well, I'm going to try. I've done the two days of July so far. So Good for you. Maybe it'll last, maybe it won't. I have a bad habit of like starting things and never finishing That's, them. That's so I was thinking yesterday, I texted Leslie and I was like, wouldn't it be cool for the months of July and August? I don't cast on anything new unless it's hand spun. So we'll see if that works out. The problem with that is, um So it was that or finishing old whips. Yeah. So those would be the two things that you could Yeah, I can finish work stuff on. out of commercial yarn. Or I can cast on new things out of hand spun because I'm creating quite the hand spun collection right you are. now. And I would take basically all of it off of your hands. <laughs> you usually steal one a week, but I like my ones this week a lot. So. I like them too. I try to only like put on the puppy eyes if it's something I really, really like. But like, I feel like I couldn't reproduce with enough effort. Yeah. And you could reproduce everything that I've done uh, with enough effort. There's that like patience and desire thing too so. <laughs> um what about reading and watching tv what have you been so doing? i have been continuing to read the pandora pine books and i actually went back and um re which are adult let me finish my thought which are adult male male mysteries um paranormal mysteries and then with ghosts and then um i and wizards and then I went back and started rereading the um, Enforcer Enigma, the San Andreas Shifter series by the lady who did the Parasol Protectorate series, mm. Gail Carriger. Carriger. Yeah. Um, so I reread those three werewolf series books as well. There's a new Ordinary Magic book by Devin Monk that just came out oh, okay. last week. So I purchased that, but I haven't um, actually read it yet. Yeah. It's That's probably next after I finish. I'm on book nine of the Pandora Pine series, and wow. I think there's 11 in the series. So when I'm done with those, I'll move on. They are nothing. Like, they are just fluff. Yeah, that's okay. Sometimes that's what you want. Yep. Well, in the summer, well, that's what I want all the time. And I have a new YA book that just arrived, thanks to um, this lovely woman named Gail, who buys a lot of books off my school wish list. 
and it is um, a retelling of the secret garden and it looks really really Ooh. good so I might start reading that it's by the same author who did Cinderella is dead so I'm excited but yeah Gail's a sweetheart she buys a lot of books off my wish list my Amazon wish list for my kiddos I'm sure they appreciate it they do they get very excited when we get Amazon boxes during the school year. Yeah, they're, they probably have the most diverse library in Mississippi, if we're being honest. Middle school, anyway. I don't know. I would be shocked if there was a library in a school, a public school library in Mississippi, a junior high, that was more diversely filled with books. Well, thank you. Than, than yours. I don't know, but we do the best we can. And y'all help so much with that, so thank you. I keep adding stuff to the, like there's so many good books that are coming out right now. Um, I mean, you have to feed that desire to read and the kids that want Oh it. yeah, like, absolutely. Not, not every kid's a reader and that's fine. You know, it's, it's They just haven't fine. found the right book yet. I, I, I don't know. I completely, I love kids that read, but I don't know, I feel like not every kid needs to read. Maybe. That kid, you know, does better with audiobooks. Or yeah, being well, that's read still too. reading. Right. Um, There's different formats, but yeah. it's still reading. Like, graphic novels, are that's still reading. There's manga. tons of different formats. Yeah, manga, um, nonfiction. You just have to find the right thing. Um, so, for me, for reading, I've been rereading the Born in Fire series by K.F. Green. I probably, I've read the first book at least a couple times. Um, I just didn't feel like searching out a new book. It can be exhausting sometimes. Uh, I finished an audiobook, The Lesson by Cadwell Turnbull, huh. which is sci-fi and it's set in the um, uh, Virgin Islands, I think. I may be getting that wrong. Maybe St. Croix. Um, but, and it is about, uh, there's, it's sci-fi, so there's like alien okay. um, involvement. I, I didn't really love it. Like, I kept waiting for some big thing that I just don't feel like I ever got, which is kind of a bummer. But um, I'm now re-listening to The Bodiverse, which is um, We Are Bob. I think it's by... It's not Scalzi. Who is it? Um, Dennis Taylor. So it's science fiction, and I'll tell, talk about it more next week. Okay. Because um, I just restarted it like an hour ago before Laura got here. Because so I was a slacker. Um, well, I mean, <laughs> it's much earlier than we usually record. Um, I've still been watching What I Lie to You, which is a British comedy panel series, and I've been interspersing it with the Big Fat Quiz. Um, of I the like year, the Big Fat Quiz. Um, which always has entertaining people on it. I think I've gone backwards to like 2016 at this I point. I really like the episodes with Noel Fielding and Richard Ayodate. Yes. Ay Ayodate, sorry. I say that wrong every time. I also really like the. Um, episodes of him on Graham Norton. He's very funny. I don't think I've watched him specifically on Graham Norton. Oh, he's very funny. But I've watched his, like, Travel Man show and yeah. Gadget Man. I've seen Gadget Man. Um, on Graham Norton, he was on a... He was in a group telling the story, and it had um, Chadwick Boseman in it, Oh, too. really? Yeah, it's really... It's a good clip, and they're bantering back and forth. Oh. Well, I'll, I will show it to you when we're done recording. It's excellent. Yeah. Richard Ayoade, he's got that... Like, I first saw him in the IT crowd, so that's sort of where I'll always remember him from. Yeah. But his demeanor makes him very young. But he's in his, like, late 30s or early 40s, married with, like, three kids. <laughs> like, I don't know. He's just, he's just so funny. He projects a very young guy. I don't know why. He just, he just makes me laugh. Yeah. It's a very dry sense of humor. Yeah. Um, but yeah, he just makes me laugh. I, I like David Mitchell as well, because um, he's always like, he, he appears very prim, and he gets made fun of a lot for that, 
but he's in he's like in on the joke and it makes it great so we've been watching a lot of british comedy panel shows panel yeah shows. it um, happens i'm out of um i'm out Taskmaster. of Taskmaster. Yeah. so i've run out officially the new season will be coming out soon yeah thank goodness uh so i think that's it do you yeah. have anything else you no want to stash talk about? dash is continuing it's a super fun group over on discord uh, I have been enjoying it immensely. There's lots of super knowledgeable people there, which is fun, too. There's some brilliant people in our stratosphere. Yes, absolutely, and super talented people as well. So, yeah, I think that's about... Oh, we have an SSK announcement in that we will have um, a virtual marketplace, just like we did last year, and um, everyone can shop it. So, and there'll be secret passwords and videos that you can collect and enter for a prize, just like last year. So it's gonna be tons of fun. Yeah. And I hope you'll join us in helping support our vendors. So we'll talk more about that uh, next yeah. week. Yeah, it'll be the 17th, I think, of July. Yeah. So there's still time. Um, but yeah, I think that's it. So you guys have an awesome weekend and a safe 4th if you celebrate. Please try to remember that there are animals in houses who are terrified of fireworks. <laughs> That's kind of why we're recording early, too, because Pearl and Buffy yeah. specifically do not do well with fireworks. Like, I don't want to dampen anybody's fun. Enjoy <laughs> your thing, but try to, like, keep it to, like, a half hour and then move on with your life. Well, here it's technically illegal to shoot them off in the city limits, but that stops, stops no one. Michael, like, a couple days ago, because here, like... As soon as a month before whatever yeah. the event like, is, they well, start opening Memorial tents Day, there's tents and sell and fireworks. Just stay. And um, a couple days ago, Michael was like, "Somebody was setting up fireworks." He's like, "You think we should call the cops?" And I'm like, "A, I can't believe we're those people. <laughs> um, we didn't. Um, and B, like, what are we gonna do? Be like, I hear fireworks. What is that gonna do? <laughs> yeah. Like, <laughs> it's fine." As long as it's before 10 o'clock, I don't mind. Once they start going after 10, I am that old woman. I'm like, what is happening? Yeah. I don't, like, everybody's allowed to enjoy themselves. It's a free country. I just wish that it wouldn't go on. I just and want on people and to on be and safe, on too. On. But so, yeah. Um, now that we've been from the old women. <laughs> I mean, if the shoe fits. Yeah. Um, it better be worth feeding. Uh, you guys have an awesome weekend, and we will talk to you again next week. Bye, y'all. Yeah.